Hello class, this is Ms. Ayo Deji with today's video on section 10.2 Taylor series. As you're watching the video, it's important to take down good notes, writing important information, vocabulary, formulas, and equations, as well as any graphs or figures that you deem necessary and important. While watching the video, feel free to pause, rewind, and replay the video as often as you need so that you can get a clear understanding of what is occurring. And at the conclusion of watching the video, write down a brief summary of what occurred in the video in your notes and submit that summary as well as the um, top question via the online WIS form. Okay, let's begin. So last um, video we looked at what are Taylor polynomials and how to determine them um, for specific functions. And again, the functions have to be continuously differentiable or i.e. always have derivatives of the function at this a value, in this case a equals zero. And I listed some um, that we worked on last class here. So we have three functions, sine x, cosine x, e to x, which can be approximated using Taylor polynomials. Um, and really, here are at least the first, I would say, for sine of x, we have a, a nine degree Taylor polynomial. Approximation for cosine of x, we have an eight degree Taylor polynomial. And for e to the x, we have a four degree Taylor, poly, uh, Taylor polynomial. And as you can see that they, these functions approximate uh, the Taylor. The Taylor polynomial approximates the function. But then the question is, what if we let n go past 9 or past 8 or past 4? In fact, what happens if you let m go all, n go all the way to infinity, where n being the degree of the polynomial? What will the Taylor series approximate? Well, if we let n go all the way to infinity, and this dot, dot, dot indicates that, then for these particular three functions, the function value at x will exactly equal the, uh, the Taylor polynomial, um, for, uh, the infinity degree. And the question is, how do we know that? Well, that's actually coming in 10.4, but in this case, uh, the infinite series of this Taylor polynomial will equal the sine of this function. The infinite series of this Taylor polynomial will equal the cosine of this function at x and vice versa. As long as x Number one is within a particular interval. Okay, so it's not all x values. Again, the idea is x has to, is along x in a particular value. And um, so, moving on, what do we call that? Well, we call that a Taylor series if it goes on to infinity, or we call it a Taylor expansion of the function. Okay. So, if you recall, I had you do a foldable, and some of you um, had the function e to the x. I think Sung Jr. had e to the x. And then I think Mike had cosine of x. And the general term for this respective function for the Taylor series uh, expansion looks like this for e to the x and then looks like this for cosine uh, of x. And you can figure that out for basically any function what the general term will look like just by trying different um, n values and seeing if you notice a pattern between all the terms. Now I want to point out, this is very important, that even though we are using continuously differentiable functions, i.e. functions that are, are differentiable always at x equals whatever that a value is, and yes they always will have a Taylor series, the question is will that Taylor series always converge to the, exactly to the function? Even though they're approximations, will they ever converge exactly to the function? And the question is, not always. Um, so you have three options. Sometimes they will converge to the function. Sometimes they will converge, but not to the function value. Um, and sometimes they will not converge. And because most Taylor series look like power series, um, you can, each of those power series does have a radius of convergence or an interval of conversions, but just because it converges doesn't necessarily mean it's going to converge to the exact function value. So it's important to note that. But for certain functions, we know in this case, these three up here, that it will converge exactly to the function value for x. Um, and 10, section 10.4 will explain another way, a more formal way of how you can verify that. All right, so in general, if I have a Taylor series for f of x about some point x equals zero, this is what it's going to look like. 
and it's very similar to the Taylor polynomial. The only difference is we don't have to specify what degree because the degree of the polynomial goes to infinity. And I want to again point out, just because we say it's equal, it doesn't necessarily mean that this all of Taylor series um, are going to converge exactly to the function value at that x. Um, but this is, if it does, and this is how you would determine the Taylor series. That's the point. We can expand that to look at the Taylor series for f of x about not a point x equals um, 0, but a point x equals a. And it looks very similar to the Taylor polynomial that we talked about last class. The only difference is it's going all the way to infinity. You are responsible for knowing what these are and being able to use them. All right, so now we're going to take a look at, I think, some examples. Let's see. Um, Oh, before we get to look at the examples, I want to point out that Taylor series conversions, first of all, because it is a series that looks very much like a power series, we know that the series will converge as long as x is in the interval of conversions. So um, in this case, for natural log of x, and I think this was um, Rick's series, um, he had natural log of x about um, x equals 1 or a equals one and his expression may have looked a little bit different because um, we just did natural log of x instead of anyway it looks something like this but if we were to graph the varying polynomial taylor polynomials a fifth degree sixth degree seventh degree eighth degree polynomial you will see that they pretty much look very similar to the actual function anywhere around this interval where x is between um, zero and two but then after that, um, they go off in their separate way. So the interval of conversions for this t uh, Taylor series is going to be between 0 and 2. And again, checking the endpoints is definitely not going to converge for x equals 0 because it's not defined. The function is not defined, but also it's not going, uh, it is going to converge for x equals 2. Okay. Let's take a look at an example. Find the Taylor series for natural log of 1 plus x about 0 and integrate its convert, investigate its conversions. Well, we basically do the same thing that we've done in the past. Figure out the derivatives of the, the function, in this case, natural log of 1 plus x, all the way up until we see a pattern. And once we have a pattern, we evaluate the derivative at that function and come up with a general term. And so as we see here, this is a general term for natural log of 1 plus x. And if we look at what we found or shown last time, this is a, the series for natural log of x, and you see that they're very similar. So it seems like the natural log of 1 plus x function will also have some type of radius conversions that's around um, of 1. As we can see in this case, we have a radius convergence of around 1, but the interval of convergence is not from 0 to 2. The interval of convergence is from negative 1 to 1. And it doesn't include negative 1 um, because, as you can see, it's not exactly that as well. And so it's important to note that um, we can use previous functions that look similar to determine the um, interval of convergence. OK. And last but not least, we're going to look at some examples. Oh, we're still not going to look at examples. This binomial series. If you remember, a binomial is a two-term expression. Um, and if and if we have this two-term expression, the terms being 1 and x, and we raise it to the p power, if we want to do a Taylor series polynomial, um, the derivatives of this function f of x look like this. And when you evaluate it at a equals 0, then the values look like this. And so together we can put together a Taylor uh, series. Um, in this case, it's a degree 3 based off these values. And again, p is the degree, so this is a very general term. This is for, in this case, and we call this a binomial series, OK? Um, very similar to Taylor series. Uh, it actually is a Taylor series, but because the function is a binomial expression, then we have something that looks like this. And some of you may recall or may know what these, this constant, oops, these constants are going to end up being, hint, hint, and choose R, but we're not going to go through that yet. So now let's take a look at an example. 
find the Taylor series about x equals 0 for 1 over 1 plus x. And I think uh, J1 had 1 over 1 minus x. So this is very similar to that. Well, this is a uh, binomial series in the sense is that p is equal to negative 1. And so we use, again, find the derivative of 1 plus x to the negative 1 and keep on finding the derivatives and evaluate those derivatives at um, x equals 0. And we end up with this expression and some things, and you end up with something looking like this. But we have to conclude that it only equals, the Taylor series only equals a function value as long as x is in the radius of convergence. And we can find the radius of convergence after we have the terms of this series. Here is find the Taylor series about x equals 0 for the square root of 1 plus x. This is also another uh, series function that we can use a binomial series with. In this case, p is equal to 1 half. We do the same process by um, finding the derivatives of um, first, second, third, fourth derivatives and see a trend. And after a few terms, we could figure out that the trend looks something like this. And we're done. <laughs> and that's it. So um, we'll, we'll do more activities in class. Hope you enjoyed it. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.